So part of our page and tab, we've got the page buttons, but we've also got line select keys down this side, and we've got dedicated function keys on this side. Here we've got the direct to button. It operates just like any legacy navigator. You hit direct to, you hit enter, and off you go. Enter and approve, and now you're going direct to. The procedure button, if you're going to an airport with a uh, procedures, uh, either departures or arrivals, you can select that. Let me just go to, we'll go back to Colorado Springs. I get procedure, I'll get a full list of all the available approaches. You can select an approach as you scroll through those approaches. Notice you'll get a, what we call a procedure preview. You select the approved approach. Now it'll give you, it'll ask you what transition, are you vectors or are you going to say the initial approach fix in this case? And off you go. Now that whole approach has been loaded for you. The nearest button allows us to do a search in the database for nearby airports, VORs, NDBs, intersections. Simply push the nearest button and you'll get a full list of the nearest airports in their closest order. And you'll notice on the map, the little blue cyan colored circle there shows us where it is in relation to our present position. So it makes it real easy to pick out a nearby airport that might work best in an emergency situation. You notice the com frequency is highlighted. If I push this button, it'll automatically tune the com frequency. I can hit direct to and fly direct to that airport. So it makes it super easy to get access to your nearest airports. The next button is your frequency button. That's frequency nomination. All your airports and en route frequencies are nominated based on where you are at the given time at your departure airport. It'll give you a list of all your departure frequencies and the order you need them, pot tower, ground. You simply touch this frequency, and it'll transfer over, or you can use the knobs and transfer it that way. There's airport frequencies, the en route frequencies, flight service, center frequencies. Highlight it, transfer it into the standby window. Over on this side, we have our line select keys. So there's land. Again, we can declutter the map. We can declutter the nav overlay of intersections, of uh, airways, et cetera, get it down to just the basic flight plan. We can show our weather overlays. This knob is for tuning the radio. You got the megahertz and kilohertz. You got your USB port here. This is for loading your databases. Your flip-flop or frequency transfer button. Makes sense. And here's your volume for your comm. You can see the little indicator show up on the radio. And then this knob is your context sensitive FMS knob. In this case, we're on map page, map tab. I can zoom with the knob, with the big knob, or I can change the view with the inner knob. In this case, if I push, right now we're in north up. If I push the button, I'm in a forward view, track up. If I push the button again, it's 360, track up. Push it again, it goes back to north up. If I were on another page, let's go to the chart. Now there's my chart page. Notice I can zoom and view. So I can zoom or I can switch through the different views of the chart. In this case, I'm on an airport diagram or I can select a chart. There's an approach chart. There's my, my hold and there's my own ship. These are geo reference charts. So it'll show where you at in relation to particular uh, chart that you got displayed. We can go over to Synthetic Vision. We've got a 3D presentation of Synthetic Vision. This is an exocentric view where it's kind of behind your own ship. Notice the 3D traffic in view. The active leg is magenta. The next leg is magenta and white, kind of a candy cane. Here's on the FMS. We go to the Synviz page. Now we've got an egocentric out the window view of Synthetic Vision. Notice I can zoom in and out. I can see 3D traffic. If I had obstacles or terrain, that would show up as well. The field of view is showing up on the compass rows down here. So as I zoom in, it shows me how much of the field of view I have in play. And again, it's got an attitude reference sensor, so it's giving us pitch and roll. There's our pitch ladder. As you zoom, obviously it scales accordingly. And here's your roll pointer up here. 
The only other button I haven't talked about here is the one, the CDI button in the upper right corner that gives you the ability to switch from GPS mode to the VLOAD mode so you can fly off the VOR. It gives you the ability to do that. You can also push and go to an OBS mode so that you can uh, fly it in OBS. Notice our color contour terrain on the uh, synthetic vision and our FLTA, which is our forward looking terrain alerting. It kind of has a flashlight beam that projects out in time, 30 seconds and 45 seconds out and a collision with the terrain is imminent. So it's a very helpful feature. There's also an audible alert that comes with that. So it's a very powerful and capable system has all the basic features of the legacy navigators you're used to. Plus we've added a lot of significant features like hybrid touch capability, touch screen, 3D synthetic vision, uh, built-in Wi-Fi and Bluetooth we haven't even talked about yet, uh, frequency nomination, all kinds of really nice features, uh, electronic approach charts. So we'll delve into each of those a little more as we move through the lessons.